Help us out with this. I'm Jeremiah. Madison was the final. Nice to talk to you, man. We're on Pod Talk TV Live right now. And so this is the question. Uh, one of uh, the, the manager of Pod TV is the marijuana man. He's an activist. He's been an editor for a long time. He's done a couple shows on the testing of cannabis. And he has a criticism of the way it's done. Because, and he's never been able to find out from anybody. So hopefully you'll be able to resolve this for us. Okay. What is I'm it? not a scientist, for sure. Okay, all right. Well, but what are we looking at? So it's a percentage of what? Is it a percentage of the entire, every bit of material? Material is there, including the plant material. Yes. So, but actually, there's actually 13 percent of the plant material and everything is THC. But see, I've always learned that the THC and other active ingredients in cannabis are only they only exist in the very tips of the tricolor. This is after you, this is after you burn the product, though. So okay. you're incinerating the product. What happens with a GC? Because this is this is based on GC analysis. Okay. So gas chromatography. What happens is. You take uh, in a, a material, any kind of substance you like, yeah. and you put it into a solution, into a solvent. Then you take the uh, uh, some sort of uh, an agitation small. material to get the solvent or the solvent to turn into a solution. <laughs> you get whatever you want that you've extracted out of it. Now you take that and make a dilution. You put the dilution, inject the dilution into a GC. The GC is a big oven with a column. You heat when you whatever you inject goes into that column. It's sticky and tacky inside of there. Okay. It sticks to it and then it burns off. Ions will burn off, come out the other end, and then whether you're using a mass spec or an FID, whatever you're using then for Detection. It goes into that. that. Yep. You use the, the ions get broken up, and then you weigh them. So okay. when you weigh them, you, so it's you, you combusted material. Exactly. That, and that's ah. what you're doing is weighing ions from a known uh, amount of material. You weigh you weigh the ions at the end, and then you take those things in the chromatogram, or chromatograph that gets made. And then you look at it on that, and you can compare. You see the amount of time that the run was for, what the weights are, and then that's how they can go in and quantify. They take a, you have to start, it's a comparative test. So you start with a known amount of THC, 100% THC, and you create a calibration curve. Start with 1% THC, 3%, 5%, all the way up to, to the amount to the amount it's of THC that you see. Exactly. Yeah. So you build a calibration curve, then you take your sample and you run it against the calibration curve, and then that's how you quantify how much THC. Is. Wow. So on a GC, you run it out. Yeah, that does. Glad we've got this recorded. Yeah, no kidding. Glad we got this. Huge question. Yeah, and that makes sense. This is HPLC, so this is high pressure liquid chromatography. You don't burn anything up. Okay. Well, with this one, it's really rad because you take you take the material and you just separate all the compounds that you can see and you quantify them that way by looking at them with liquid. Um, the big difference is here you can see a silicon so it's, it's not decarboxylated, it's not burned off or anything. So when you hold a bud in your hand. This, this is much more equivalent to what you're holding in your hand. It's not burned up, it's just chilling. It's and in it's a regular like, massive percentage. It's like 17. Well, that's THCA. Okay. So you got to pay attention. The other thing is, when you look at results, you have to know that THCA is THC. All right. Yeah, yeah. Delta 9 right. THC is the one we all love. That's psychoactive yeah, THC. Yeah. Delta 9. Yeah. Yeah. That's the D9 THC number because it's decarboxylated. You get the already the carbon molecules okay, burned off, and you get the decarboxylated value, which is delta 9 THC. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that actually really does clear it up for us. It lot. makes way much more sense. And that's why, sorry, when, you're up, no, no, when somebody says do. they have a strain that's 25% or 30%, it's not because of one gram, which is a sample amount that we take, yeah. you're telling me that 30% of one gram is pure THC. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's just, All right, that's, that, that's, where, that's where the uh, confusion comes in, I think. Yeah. In, in our company, we get a lot of criticism in the U.S. because we break hearts, you know. We're growers ourselves, and growers come to us and they bring a product, and it's 9% THC, but, you know, 9% THC is still like, the, the terpenes interact with our, our systems as each individual person, and then the cannabinoids come in behind them, and that's how we get the effect. The best OG Kush I ever smelled in my life, my favorite, and I love OG, was 9 for the THC. And it was just the best high, the best taste, everything was good about it, it worked best for me. So, so high THC, it's not growing. Thanks a lot, guys. Huh, but it's weird because it seems like what you're doing is actually measuring the quality of those things by the amounts. But yeah, it's, 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 well, it's different though, you know, because the other the other thing is, what you start to do when you start to do this, because right now when you look, when I look at this result, I see the, the, that in one gram of this, there's uh, 100 and uh, there's a bit of 
Yeah, 133 milligrams of THC. Okay. So when you start to do THC testing and potency, you can convert the milligrams into milligrams. milligrams. So when a patient walks into a dispensary or a collective, and they, they're going to buy a gram of cannabis and it's $20, or a gram of hash is $20, now we can look at it and go, oh, well, there's only you know 132 milligrams of THC in that flower, but there's 600 or 500 milligrams in the, the gram of hash. So when they use their money, they go, well, I'm going to buy one gram of, hat, of, of flowers, and I'm going to buy three grams of hash. You know, and in the U.S., we see that patients are getting, uh, you know, they're getting hash, and then they're taking it and putting it in the tea, doing other things with it to stretch their dollar, because now they're getting more milligrams in it. Um, and well, the testing will monitor that yeah, and be able to actually see where your money's going. Yeah, well, you know how to use it better. And then the other thing, too, is we're all, we're all consumers. We're all used to going to the pharmacy walk in there and we buy, you know, the pharmaceutical drugs that we use a specific way. We're all come up, we've all also come up, you know, essentially from the market that we come from. We sit on our friend's couch and we buy a bag of weed. But when you put the two together and it evolves to the point where it is now, um, it gets to the point now where it's like, you want the same experience when you go to a compassionate club as you do when you get to a pharmacy because you can spend your money better too. Exactly. No, it is. And, and actually, that's one of the criticisms by, you know, governments, courts, and other things, that there's no way to really rate cannabis because all plants are different and so on and so forth. And with synthetics, obviously, it's always the same amount of milligrams every time. You can, you know, I guess titration, that's what it really comes down to is how much you... Milligrams equals titration. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, ask, ask those same people uh, if, they, if they dose alcohol. Yeah, 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 I think they do. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, well, that's very cool, man. Much appreciated. Yeah, Thanks no for clearing that up for us. Yeah. We're going to have to play this for Marijuana Man as soon as we get back, and uh, maybe he'll have to do an addendum to his show about it. Because it, it finally explains things in a better way. If you want, we can have a Skype. And my business partner, David, is more of a science end, and he also loves to argue. So we can have it where they can Skype each other if you guys That is brilliant. Marijuana Man does a show on Wednesdays called From Under the Influence. Okay. So we can set the Skype up for that real easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we totally should. It'd be awesome. Really yeah, and, and short of that, I mean, you guys come on my show as well. I have a Friday show, and they always do Skype on that as well. Okay. We've been trying to anyway. So. Yeah, he's got a Monday show. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have, have you guys on for sure. Uh, San Francisco. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so maybe show this off up close a little bit more here. But I'll show you the it's second, second page, page too. Uh, That's the GC results. The second one is the HPLC. So one's gas, one's liquid. Yeah. And so the liquid, I mean, it works in a similar way. You, you explained how the burning works and it goes through and so on and so forth. The liquid, you know, it leaves everything in its natural state. Right. Um, so it's it's just much more gentle. It allows you to see me separate me. But though now, they, you guys are saying you give the weed back afterwards. Like, yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll explain the machine. Are boxalized or is it burned? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the way this system works, it's pretty ingenious. It's used in pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical industry. It's used in the agricultural industry. And what it is is you got analysis equipment. Right? You use a GC, you use an HPLC, you use these different things to look at stuff. You're quantifying what's in them. Well, you're collecting data while you're doing this, yeah. which is a great deal of information about the individual sample. Uh, what we have at our at our company is we've done a lot of GC analysis, about 28,000 samples. We've wow. done a lot of HPLC analysis as well. In how many years? How long has been uh, We've been open since 2007, so since George Bush came over. It's been a long road. Good lab, my um, but uh, so what we've done though is, and what, the, like, the way the system works is, in analysis, you once you're collecting data and it's, and it's valid data, you can take it and use it as a reference. So what we're doing here is we're using two pieces or three pieces of reference uh, equipment all to talk to each other to be able to get a result. And the way we're also doing it is we're from Silicon Valley essentially. Um, it's a lot of technology there, cloud. You know, yeah, oh yeah. So what we're doing is we're taking the NIR instrument that you see behind us here. We can take a sample and grind it up like it's uh, ready for a joint. Yeah. And we put the sample yeah. inside the machine. And uh, what it does is it looks into the sample. It's able to collect data from the sample and then run it through the server back to our database. Um, and then we have a proprietary software uh, that we use that allows us to make a very, very accurate prediction. That's what the result would be. And then we can send it back here. So it's based on uh, other collected data, not just what's happening. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 it doesn't work specifically like you could come up and say, "Hey, uh, we've, we've read a rare strain. You're not going to have ever seen it because we're looking at plant matter. Right. We're not looking at strains." And, and, you know, yeah. and it, when it comes down on a molecular level yeah. or whatever, it's all the same stuff. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. really matter. Right? I'm looking at data, so yeah. and this this piece of instrument uh, equipment is actually used, like I said, yeah. in agriculture. Yeah. They use it to detect, to detect protein levels in corn and things like that. Uh, really? Yeah. So yeah. it's 
not just with cannabis. Can you show us how it works or like what's happening here? I see things are spinning around. Yeah, right now there's a sample that's in it. This is Eric. Eric's actually grinding up the so, sample. How's it going, Eric? Cleaning a grinder to run another sample real quickly. Welcome to Pod TV. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, very cool. Yeah, that one's running right now. I'm prepping one. Yeah, I've got one running and then if you get a screenshot, you'll see the result will pop up on the screen there. Um, as soon as it's done, it takes about 80 seconds to get around so that we can get a, so that we allow the NIR to get a good enough view of the sample. I see from all directions or something, is that why yeah, is it it's moving? Is, it's moving so that um, the light coming up through it, being able to look through the bottom of the uh, sample cup, yeah. The sample cup has a quartz bottom, so it comes up through the quartz bottom and when you when we pull it out you'll be able to look and see that it's got a great deal of matter that, or material that's pressed up against that glass. Yeah. So we can look at it, it rotates so that it can actually get the best look possible. So here's the results screen just popped up here. Yeah, we oh, the results. That's the software. The have gas chromatography up top and then liquid chromatography showing the acidic uh, values down below. So the, the strain here was... It also does a moisture content analysis. Right, and then you show this on the chart where that is. Yeah, it's time to find TV. This is pretty cool. I haven't seen this yet. I've had a chance to go. He was just um, answering a lot of questions there. Yeah, the moisture is, well, it's, it's water. Most of the amount of water that's in the sample. So it's like the cure, how well the cure is. We have some clients in California that are large collectives, um, and we have some also that are large producers. So in the distributing the product, they want to make sure that it travels at the right moisture, uh, moisture level, or it's sealed and stored at the right moisture level. Of course, right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta have it. Proper storage. Yeah, yeah. Such roll up. He knows it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's, and it has to go through the in California. It's being grown. It's being packaged. It's being brought to the distributor. So the, the life of it has to be protected as much as possible. Right. Very cool, man. And it's so much better. You know, there's so much more valuable than a bag of chips. So you really have to treat it right. Exactly. So he's putting the sample in. Yeah. 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 Here's the cup itself. So this is the cartridge that we load. And you can see that it's it's in the same state that it would be as if you were to put it into a joint. Right there. And it's in the same state when it comes out. So yeah. we can take it right out of there, put it into a rolling paper, and consume it. Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. Pack that's it in there. Cool. Non-destructive. Yeah, it's crazy how it works that way. Because usually, I you know, anytime you measure something, you're doing some sort here. of onto the optical yeah. bench. Yeah, yeah, it just might be sooner than that. Yeah. Yeah, four or five. And then I'll let Wilson enter in the data and then run the scan. It's all touch screen, very fancy. So then you just clean it out and get it ready for the next sample. Yeah, and the only thing I really need is a stable power supply, uh, the, you know, the right environmental conditions for this hop. Mm -hmm. um, and an internet connection, so sometimes we can just hook up like a 4G like wireless connection. And yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, that's, I saw that. So that's cool stuff. Here's Jody talking with Lady D's. So there you have Pot TV. That's how it's done. That's how you measure cannabis, the, the actual active ingredients in it. There Very cool. Thanks a lot, man. That was excellent. We'll definitely have you or you know whoever on the show to talk yeah, about it sure. again. And uh, Marijuana Man, I bet he'll have some more questions. So Maybe. And yeah. here, in case you guys forgot, it's Steve Phil. Steve Phil Lab. Steve Phil Lab. Steve and you Phil can go Lab. to, uh, my name's Addison DeMora, I'm with Steve Phil Lab. And you can go to stevephillab.com, or you can also go to Quantican. Uh, dot com as well and check out the unit and see how where are you guys located from? California? Oakland, California. Thanks again, brother. Yeah, thank you very much. That was awesome.